a 27 year old music producer from Boston who lives in South Jersey. He's been trying to make a name for himself lately by collaborating with other producers and songwriters to create records, not just beats. I was working on the mix for the joint for Drea. I was trying up. to get yeah, True. just trying to get the backgrounds together on that. So let's see if we can listen to that for a little bit. I messed with that track heavy though. to record that record. When is she uh, I don't know when know? she's gonna record it or how that's happening, but you know, Jeff says she wants to record it, so that's what's up. I'm like, alright, we're from the dude uh, uh what's his name? Capriccio. Mm -hmm. Are there any of the con are there any of the concepts that we're looking for to, like is she like asking for a certain concept? Yo, I just got this um message from Felicia at okay. Dynamic Producer about um the weekend coming up in you know Georgia, right? And there's like what's a, the set? There's a few different uh, opportunities that she's talking about, but this first one sounds kind of dope. It says uh, its style is hip hop and electronic, with like dubstep elements. So like, and it says up tempo. Okay. So it says the concept is going to be like a Euro rapper with a pop hook on it. Mm. Like, um, and I quote, no soft shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, do you guys, we have anything for that? Do you guys Off have right? any tracks? I mean, it says it's for a movie. So, about fast cars, chases, adrenaline and speed. Mm. Doesn't look like a pop. Sounds like a Vin Diesel movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah. definitely, it sounds like, um, what's that movie called? The, uh, fast, fast and Furious. Yeah. So you guys think that wide track might be good for it, or? Oh, true. Yes. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. I forgot I about the wide about track. That. Weekend coming up, man. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just soup for this weekend. We got to start get, putting things together for all these opportunities. There's, that's just one of four. We got a country what? pop record. Yeah. Got to put something together for Taylor Swift. Oh. That, that's big money. Country pop, that is. Well, what's up with that one job? What's up with the? Well, that's not really country pop. That uh, oh, the, the Drew guitar. Yeah. I, we might as well get that shot. I mean, yeah. why not though? Yeah. And you'd have to switch some drums up on that record. That's just my opinion. Because when I first said it, like to me, it was like, all right, like John Mayer kind of vibe. Yeah, but exactly. We just gotta smooth out a little more. That's all. We need Perfect. to lace that. Well then let's do it. Like, Lace it, dog. Gotta do it then. Perfect. Sheezy is a 33-year-old music producer from Oxon Hill, Maryland. He's been developing his own eclectic sound for a while, so creatively, his mind is wide open. But he often struggles with balancing the technical aspects of music production.
grinding for a minute trying to get in where he fits in but hasn't had any major success. He's even considered quitting his day job as a help desk supervisor to follow his dreams. See, for Sheezy, being responsible has paid off. He has a good job and just became a homeowner, but he's not fulfilled at the end of the day. And while he's quite intelligent, he often relies on the guidance of his parents when he's unsure of which move to make. His father has played a huge role as he himself was a multi-musician and played with Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder back in the day. As y'all know, I've been, you know, doing music, you know, whether in a band or production, going on 10, 15 years. You know, I got it from you. So yeah. um, this is like my first major track, you know, to just kind of go out there, you know, get my music heard and see what people think about it. I mean, I'm a little nervous, so I just wanted to get a little advice from you. I mean, I know you had some reservations about me and my music, all I've been through. So what do you think? Yes, I did have some reservations about your music, but I've kind of gotten over that now. I see that this is something that you enjoy and you want to do. And, um, and your daddy and I, have been, your daddy especially been a very um, big supporter of you. And, um, and, you know, your daddy's been in this music business for many, many years. And you can't ask for a better person to, 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 be, to, to learn from than your father. Um, as far as giving you musical advice about going to Atlanta, I, I can't give you that. And just, you know, one thing that you always tell me is just work smarter, not harder. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a while, you know, I just thought that the only way that I could get out here is I just need to drop everything. I need to quit my job and just kind of go all out. Um, but it's just about working smarter, not harder. And I see a lot of my, you know, buddies that, you know, try to go that route, but they can't get anything going just because they don't have, you know, any resources, financial, you know, and any of that. Broke. Yeah. Ain't, <laughs> you know, so. ain't, ain't nothing worse, ain't but one thing worse than not being able to accomplish something is not accomplishing and being broke. Right. See, right. I may not do what I want, but I ain't broke. Right. And that's important. Right. And that's important. Very important. And, and plus, one of the things uh, uh, an investor uh, mentor told me uh, a long time ago, and, and, it, and it's really true if you ever try to get a loan, you got to almost show them that you don't need a loan to get a loan, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with music, right? When people call me for a gig, I'm like, well, let me check my calendar, you know what I mean? And, and that breeds demand because nobody wants anybody to sitting around doing nothing because it's like, well, maybe they ain't really that good. So look, son, you, you know what the deal is. I mean, you know how music is. You got to go with your heart. You can't go with a lot of what a lot of people say and a lot of people's opinion. You know what you feel because it's only going to be genuine when you come there. So you got to go with that. But you also got to be mindful of all the little bear traps, as I call it, that would derail you, whether it's the business bear traps or whether you got some of these 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 snakes or alligators that would, you know, do things that is going to detract you. And unfortunately, sometimes you, you got friends and others that, that are haters, right? And you got to avoid that. So you just got to go down there and kill it, but be mindful, right? Because if you go down there nervous and half-stepping, it's gonna show on your music, and then you're gonna be wish it, coulda, shoulda. So you gotta go there with all the gusto and just knock them out and let the rest of it take its place. Cause you know, my thing is, if you do your homework and your heart is really in it, you good. So, you know. Custom is not your average producer on the come up. He wants to make it big, but if he doesn't, it won't kill him. During the day, he works as a defense contractor. On his lunch, he's trading stocks. So by the evening, that's when he produces and writes music. He lives alone and has a home studio, less than elaborate to say the least, but he gets the job done. Here he is talking to me about the upcoming dynamic producer event in Atlanta. Hey, what's up, Custom? How are you? Doing well, how about yourself? Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> are you excited? Are you nervous? Like, how are you feeling? I'm excited, I'm confident, and I'm looking forward to everything we got going on. So let me ask you, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate yourself as a producer? Like, with 10 being, like, top, top, top. Um, I'm going to say a 
Alright, I'll rate myself as a 10. Oh, okay. That sounds like you think you're going to come and win. Yeah, basically. did. You know, I'll work with it. I've got some material. If it works out, it, it it's, it's great. And if it doesn't, we'll move on. You know, if, with dubstep and, and, the, and the way it can be done, it's so particular how artists want to control whether the genre is presented in a specific way. And if I learn more about what the artist or the label or the management representing the artist wants the sound, then I can tailor that presentation the way it should be done. We're going to make it work. It's going to be heat. And it'll be so undeniable that it'll be dynamic. So I'll make sure it's going to be ultimate, just like you like it. Well, the stakes are high, so I'm going to remember this conversation, and you better bring it. You got it. All right, Custom. I'll talk to you later. All right. Okay, bye. All right, now. Meet Brew and Eno, two African brothers who didn't have to pursue music production. They have a well-to-do family, strong academic backgrounds. They could have written a ticket anywhere, but they chose music yet they haven't hit it big yet. They keep coming in second place and they don't know why. Welcome back, young. Sure. Acting school, right? All days. My head is spinning right now, bro. I'm there with them, them crazy white girls. They're the best, man. The best for what? What you mean? <laughs> what you mean, though? Uh huh. Game time. Well, listen, man, you gotta come to my show. A couple, uh, two weeks. I think it's what seventh through the ninth. Probably tell my tire and the fan to come through and all that. You doing that, that uh, Don Cheeto joint, right? Yeah, top dog in the dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna tell you which one I am, though. But listen, <laughs> this DP joint, man. Are, man. Son, be ready for this joint next week, man. All right. Ah, uh, I gotta finish this beef for that too. Ah, uh, um, listen, man. All them joints, listen. All them joints that we had, like, remember, remember we went to that um the uh, showcase in February, like around my birthday. You mean with Custom? Yeah, you remember him, don't you? <laughs> listen, man. All I know is, man. Listen, man. We just gotta step it up. So you know, we just gotta come a, a thousand percent. Honestly, son, we stayed up. What? Three nights in a row and made those beats. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't mix them. We didn't do. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do the homework. So, I mean, honestly, man, we just gotta like start now. The beats that we already finished, you know, perfect them even more. And man, so I think we should be good, man. Like, we got a unique sound. Nobody has that sound. So. I, just, I just gotta remember to mix them, not before the 
the actual event. I mean, man, we learn it. But, uh, and then some, and you know how, like, most of, you know what I'm saying, most producers are by themselves. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So how do you think, you know, like, me and you as a duo can, like, shut it down, down in the, down in the eight, man? You well, think? you know, you, you're more DC than me, right? The same. You, you're just more DC than me. You, I'm like, I'm like TS, though. You're like Wale, so. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> You mean, all right, man, you mean as far as what? It's as, far, it's as far as culture goes. You it's know like knowing, yeah. like, what's going on. Like, I'm I'm more technical, so, I mean, yeah, if you just that. actually combine the stuff, I mean, usually it's just like, you know, you make your beats and then I make mine, and then, like, oh, yeah, yeah we, we should add this. stuff together, right? Yeah, I, I, I think we just, like, for this, for this for this DP jump, we just got to do it at the same time. Like, I'm doing the same. If you add the drums, I add the treble, put the compression yeah. in there, and then boom. But it'll be better, you know what I'm saying? It'll be better this time because, I mean, some were actually together. You know, last time, you know, was it was just like, yeah, yeah. yeah, son, you'll be in Boston, I'd be in Philly, I'd be in L.A., you know, so, son, it was, like, extremely hard to do anything. I mean, son, like, we're in the same vicinity, so, you know? So now to work. Yes. It should definitely work. I mean, if you wake up, knock the beats out, whatever, you know, they give us, and, you know, how DP does. Honestly, so. I don't even know what to expect. I'm just kind of, I'm just, I guess I'm just, I'm anxious. Anxious is good, man. Butterflies is good, man. So, I mean, it's, heard Michael, man. It's an opportunity, you know, just to do this again one more time. And you lose this time. It's time to go, man. I'm ready. I don't know about you. You sure? I'm ready, though. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, hey, it's the eight. Either way, it's the eight. You can get out anyway. Man. You know, so, man, we'll do it. I'm, man. Just, I'm just having going down to Atlanta, man. Man, throw some of my Congo, some of some of my DC, you know. They're not gonna know what to do with DC go down there. Exactly. Yeah, no so, idea. yeah, man, we rolling it. All right. Rogue Regime is a three-man production team out of Dayton, Ohio. The team consists of Futuristic 911, Sonny Lexington, and Biv the Nerd. Like many music production teams, the Rogue Regime came together because they love making music but they struggle with trusting each other and knowing how to work effectively together on the business end. These conflicts often dilute their attempts to make an impression on anyone who can help them get into the music industry. Talking about the event, yeah, brother. Man, man. You ready? ready to go, man. Yeah, I'm ready, man. Music ready? You already know the music ready. You ready to get it in? What's my name? Bib, Bib, that's right, Bib Meister. Yeah, man, <laughs> we ready. Now we was just talking about it though. We um, we wanted to be honest with you. You had some concerns about you know some of the blow ups that you had in the past when we get in different positions. You know, like we had the blow up with Peanut. We mm -hmm. was talking about the baseline or whatever. It was trying to tell you that the baseline was wrong or whatever, and you was like. You know, you did music theory, you got all A's, and you know your bass lines, and he was just trying to give you tips. And it turned into a heated debate to where he was even ready to kick you out of the studio. Yeah. You know, that type of thing, you know, we expected that to not happen. So we wanted to just hash that out just to let you know that that was a concern we was having. So we can talk it through, let you know where we're coming from. You can let us know where you're coming from. We know it's passion. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. That's peanut, you know, it's not a big deal. It's nothing to worry about. That's just something I'm passionate about. Passionate about my music. You know, I love music and it's my thing. So anybody try to tell me wrong about it, yeah, it's gonna be a heated debate, but it's it's not a big deal. And even with Lauren. That Lauren won't even work with us. Because she Some people said, just don't need to work together. It's not even you know, it is what it is. She's moved on, I moved on, it's not a big deal. But we don't want that to happen again. It's, yeah, not, exactly. it's nothing to worry about. It's really not. So you said there's nothing to worry about when we get down there in front of some major cats? Of course not. Of course? Okay. I'm ready for this opportunity. I know. I'm ready to get it in. So if they don't like the chords you play, you'll change them? There's about 160 different other chords I can play. That's I'm not worried about it. That's what I'm talking about. Cool. We just wanted to make sure we, uh, we hashed it out. Make sure you know where we're coming from. So we can all go down there comfortable, feeling comfortable about the event. Not having to worry about nothing. Exactly. Because the music ain't going to be a problem. Cool. I ain't concerned about the music. Yo, what's good, man? What's up, Aquarius? What's good? 
chilling, talking about this event that's coming up. Anything outside of the music, like networking tips, do's and don'ts when you uh, run into somebody in the industry or somebody major. Any tips on do's and don'ts? introduce you to JRB, producer who's from the country, Darlington, South Carolina to be exact. During the day, JRB works at a call center building customer service requests for churches. And when he's not doing that, he's plotting on how to get a bigger break in the music industry. See, JRB has had some success, but it's hard to get on the fast track when you don't live in a major music city. He's thought about leaving South Carolina, but it's hard when the best job he's had also helps him to care for his grandmother who suffers from Alzheimer's disease. So for now, JRB is playing it by ear. Thank you for calling ACS People Support. This is John. Can I have your site number? Thank you. What can I do for you? All right, great. So do you mind if I take the mouse? All right, great. So we're just going to hit unblock here and we can minimize. All right, let's double check. One, two. If we come over to the summary field, I think this is going to be our answer. I'm sorry? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I mean, you can add guests to your... Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay, great. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that was an easy answer for you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Did you have any other questions? Hey, what's up, man? What you up to? I, I got you, man. I'm on my break, getting ready to uh, gearing up for this dynamic producer thing, man. Getting ready to go. Man, what? What you say? Man, I guess if if not, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm I'm looking forward to going down there. Um, next week, middle of next week. Yeah. Man. <laughs> the tag in there. I know. Hey, you never, you never know, man. Some, some good things been happening, I guess. Um, not really. I mean, I guess they don't want to, you know, tell us, so we can, you know, be surprised. But, you know, I guess it's gonna be some competitions or something. I don't really know, man. Yeah, I hear you. I know, man. I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, years ago when we started, you know, used to, used to kind of dream about being on a track, and now you, you know, actually got the opportunity. It's kind of cool. Never, never really thought you would. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, well, all right, man. I guess I'm a, I don't got that much time left on my break. I was just hitting you up. Um, 
probably gonna get on my computer for a minute and see if I can try to knock out something at work, you know? Yeah, I hear you, man. All right, man. Uh, yeah, man. Thank you. Talk to you later. Yeah, All right. And every singer is not an artist. And every artist is not a star. And every star is not a superstar. And every superstar is not a legend. And every legend is not an icon. So which one are you? I don't have the equipment, or I don't have the sound that Timberland got. I, came, I don't have an engineer, I don't have this. What you have to understand is when you present your tracks, you're in the same caliber and competition as Kanye West, Pharrell, Rodney Jerkin. No one cares what you made yourself on. No one cares. People are not willing to put forth the effort that it takes to be successful. You know, when you're saying I'm looking for a manager, no man, get relevant. Trust me, when you hot, I'm gonna find you. If you don't have that I won't say uh, attitude, but it has to be like the, in the pit of your stomach. If you don't have that, there's no reason to try to get in this industry because they're gonna chew you up and spit you out. And then they're gonna replace you with somebody that looks exactly like you, does the same thing you do, and they might even name them the same name they gave you. <laughs> Keeping it 100.